Right, thank you. So we've got Niels Bourne, thank you. Uh, University of London, City. Uh, Niels is a research fellow at the Violence and Society Centre at City University of London and the Vision Consortium. Uh, in his work, he investigates uh, violence and abuse and its relationship with labour market transitions, health and wellbeing. Niels is also responsible for a programme of work harmonising and integrating data uh, from various surveys and administrative administrative records regarding violence and abuse. Thank you. My encouragement to the mic, please. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, okay. Hi, everyone. Um, so today I will be presenting on a project where I'm working on uh, crime survey waves, uh, and that's available for public use. And then I'll illustrate its usage with a paper that is uh, submitted at a journal that is with Polina, but also with Marilyn and Jess, who are sitting right there. Um, so, just oh, you can follow the QR code to the reshare website where it is posted, uh, and it's part funded by the UK PRP. So, sorry, I'm just gonna. So first, why combine a lot of years? Like many people, will, um, many people will know. Um, well, it's. The point is to do temporal trends, but also to look at maybe specific uh, offenses or crimes that don't have enough, um, are not common enough in a one year of the crime survey. You combine a lot together. You can also look at specific population groups. You can look at uh, intersecting, in um, intersecting inequalities and rare consequences. So just as the importance of looking at multiple years together, this project specifically comes from that we needed to do that, and we need to do that for multiple projects, multiple uh, times, and for multiple different time frames. So we developed this initially for our own project, and we thought it might be useful for others as well, so to share it. Um, and combining multiple years, especially for, can be time consuming, annoying, complex, whatever. Um, so this is hopefully to help other researchers. It's in Stata, because that was the program that we use. Um, <laughs> that will be impossible to read, but it doesn't matter. Like just, you can specify uh, what you want. So do you want the years before 2001 or after? If you want of the years after, how many do you want? Do you want from 2001 to the latest one? Yes or no? Do you also want to merge the adolescent uh, or youth samples, that is one. Do you want the ethnic minority boost surveys? Do you want the boltons? And that is, you can specify it and it should run your specification. And you specify where you, the data stored and the folder structure, which is all as it's downloaded from the UKDS website. Um, so yeah, just to hopefully ease and otherwise maybe annoying tasks. Maybe that's just me who finds that annoying. So in the end, depending on which ones you requested, you get a, the following data sets. So the post-2001 uh, non-victim form, the victim <coughs> forms, the pre-2001 non-victim <coughs> form, adolescent youth um, surveys, uh, ethnic minority boost, and they are saved in the folder that you specified. <laughs> that was quite, um, quick. So yeah, it is also on the reshare website, there's a user guide that if you follow it, you can hopefully easily do it uh, for your own study. And a couple of things important to note is what it does do and what it doesn't do. So first it merges just all the files together and that's the point. It's flexible that you only need to download the data that you need. Um, and it's relatively quick, um, but it doesn't harmonize the variables. So things change over time. Uh, they tend to have a different name when the new version of the variable is um, included. Um, we did not harmonize those because what I might need for my research might be different from yours. Um, of very few, but you know, one uh, variable that does change the uh, category slightly is household income. So just to highlight, if you use it, 
to also check back into the service to see, hey, is it exactly the same over the years? Um, also, what this doesn't do, uh, uh, doesn't work in the UKDS uh, secure researcher environment um, because the folder structure is slightly different. Um, the data sets have different names. Um, and a year is missing. Um, and it's a stata code. Um, so that is important, again, um, for stata unit please. So an example of how we've used it, well, well actually you've seen Polina who has used it and I believe Eloise as well. Um, this is a different paper and it's focused on intimate partner violence uh, based on the face-to-face -face, uh, question uh, section and that has a reason which I'll come to later. Um, but then, so the previous research on intimate partner violence and health has indicated that intimate partner violence has a strong negative impact on health and well-being. Um, and more so than non-intimate partner violence, I believe, in general. And also, intimate partner violence is defined by the relationship between victim and perpetrator. However, that noted, there are a lot of different types of intimate partner. Um, some are current partners, some are ex-partners, but also some might be spouses and some might be dating. And this diversity within the intimate partner category might impact how much violence by these perpetrators, perpetrators um, affect uh, victim survivors or, and affect their health, their health risks. So we wanted to study this and therefore uh, we studied, we uh, ask uh, how the health and well-being impact differ for different types of intimate partner perpetrators. And we focus on a variety of different uh, forms of violence and abuse, specifically <coughs> physical violence and abuse, sexual violence and abuse, threats and also economic crimes by a um, intimate partner. Um, we used the crime survey. I think I'm going quite quickly through it all, but we'll see. Um, so we used the face-to-face -face section um, specifically because that's where it is asked on the um, victim-perpetrator relationship, these specific types of intimate partners. Was it a current uh, spouse um, or a current boyfriend and a former spouse and a former uh, boy or girlfriend? However, that to note is that IPVAs are underreported in the face-to-face -face section compared to the self-complete section. Uh, and over 20 years of merging data, we have about uh, 4,000 records of IPVA, 4,000 victim forms, about three and a half are uh, among female victim survivors. And, well, they asked then about the crime experience in the past 12 months. The models that are all, or the figures that I show you later are based on order, on, uh, order of logic models and uh, marginal effects at the means. Uh, we analyze men and women separately and we control for whether it was a singular event or was it rep repeated, um, main demographic variables as well, and also um, survey year. Yeah. The key measurements that I wanted to discuss today, so first we, dependent variable, we have emotional well-being and physical injury. Emotional well-being is like how much the, the crime offense uh, affect you? Did it affect you uh, not at all or up to very much? And physical injury is whether no force was used, force was used but no uh, injury and then did it lead to an injury? The victim perpetrator uh, at the time of the incident um, is, um, these are the categories as used and or women as in survey, so is it a husband, was it the husband, wife, or partner? Was it a current boyfriend or girlfriend? Was it the former spouse, um, husband, wife, or partner, former boy or girlfriend? And we combined all other types of perpetrators in the other category. For the offense uh, categories in 
which we analyze separately then, is uh, physical violence and abuse, sexual violence, threats, and economic crimes. We also include economic crimes for the reason that um, economic crimes by an intimate partner may be considered to be a part of economic abuse, um, but also under economic crimes recorded in the crime survey, as Marilyn and Jess have shown in a paper recently published, um, there's quite a bit of, um, let's say, physical violence involved as well. Uh, at least disproportionately compared to other groups, if I uh, say that correctly. <laughs> no. um, noteworthy, we don't include coercive control and stalking. So just the descriptives of the um, current in of the intimate partner violence and abuse recorded, so different types of intimate partner violence, about 70% uh, is by a former married partner, so that is the red group is former spouse and um, blue is current spouse, so it's by a former or currently married people or partner, and 25% is by a former boy or girlfriend and 5% is by a current boy or girlfriend. Um, so as an indication that at least according to the face-to-face -face section of the crime survey, the majority of intimate partner violence is due to current or formerly married people or uh, partners. Um, now what type, <coughs> sorry, um, what type of crime has been committed in these different um, relationship contexts? Um, the percentage will be difficult, but uh, here on their current spouse or partner in blue, about 50% of the crimes that we recorded are physical violence and abuse, 9% sexual, 23 threats, uh, and about uh, 19 economic. For current boy, and bo boy or girlfriend, it's about 60% uh, physical violence. <coughs> and if you look at former spouses and former boy or girlfriends, um, there's relatively more threats and relatively more economic crimes committed by these types of intimate partners. Um, yep. So then we look at the impact that it has, um, that the respondents has. So it is here uh, based on ordered logic models with marginal effects at the means. And in red, it is very much, you were, uh, where respondents say they were very much emotionally affected by what happened. And here it's current spouse or partner, and that is higher, significantly higher than a current boyfriend or girlfriend for physical violence. So but physical violence by a current spouse or partner seemed to have a higher emotional impact than by a current boyfriend. Although, um, oh, and but also by a former spouse or partner is also a higher um, has a higher emotional impact than by a uh, current boy or bo girlfriend. Um, important to note is that all IPVA has a higher emotional impact than by a other type of perpetrator. If we look at economic crimes, we see a relatively similar um, a pattern where current spouses um, have a higher impact, or economic crimes by current spouse have a higher impact than crimes by a uh, former, uh, sorry, by a current boyfriend or girlfriend. Uh, this is, by the way, against women. Um, oh, for sexual violence and for threats, there were no statistical differences between the groups. If we look at the risk of physical injury, um, it's slightly different, the results, namely that current spouses uh, have a higher risk of injury uh, or physical violence than physical violence committed by uh, former spouses um, and also by then former boy or girlfriends. For sexual violence, there are no statistical significant differences between the intimate partner perpetrator types. Um, and among economic crimes, um, of economic crimes committed by a current spouse or partner, about 20% lead to injury. 
um, and that is significantly higher than by former spouses. So as an indication that uh, crimes recorded in, uh, in the crime survey in the face-to-face -face section by current spouses seem to have a higher risk of injury than by former spouses, um, at least for physical and economic. So in conclusion, um, first, combining multiple years of the crime survey is very useful if you want to look at small populations at rare uh, consequences of smaller groups, uh, looking at intersectional inequalities, um, and this code may aid you that uh, in a bit for a bit. Um, then regarding the paper, so all IPVA has a higher emotional and physical health impact than offenses by others. Uh, and this is the case for both men and women. And for physical and economic IPVA against women, uh, regarding the emotional impact, it is that current and former spouses uh, all partners have a higher impact than when they were described by the respondent as a current boy or girlfriend. But for injuries, it seems to be the case that it's more current partners versus former partners that increase the risk of injury. Um, and where research and policy doesn't already account for these differences, that might be interesting for future research or interventions. That's it, thank you. Thank you.